Swamiji, can you describe the law of magnetic attraction? The, the feeling that you have for somebody, it goes out and that person will feel it. Women are often aware that a man has fallen in love with them, for example. They feel that magnetism. When you want to meet somebody, if you put out that strong thought, you'll be amazed. I was in, in very interestingly, um, I was in uh, coming to Calcutta some years ago, and I had wanted to meet somebody who had been, he was Indian, but he had been in college in America, and I'd met him there, and we were friends. But I'd lost his address, and I didn't know how to reach him. And I said, Divine Mother, I would like to meet him. How can I do it? I reached the uh, Calcutta. There was nobody there to meet me. They were caught in traffic. Mm. And instead of rushing to the nearest telephone to find out what's the matter and so on, I just calmly said, Divine Mother, what, what do you have in store for me? Just at that moment, somebody stopped in front of me. He said, what is your good name? And I told him. He said, oh, I've been longing to meet you. He said, a, a friend of mine, who was this one I wanted to meet, has uh, shown me your photograph, and I've been wanting to meet you ever since. And I said, and I've been wanting to meet him. He said, well, I've landed in Calcutta to go see him. He's staying in Calcutta right now. Mm -hmm. So through that, I got to see this friend of mine. Mm -hmm. But it's amazing. Actually, we live in a universe of consciousness. Everything is a dream of God's. Everything is made of his consciousness. And if you tune into that consciousness, then you can attract to yourself every things and people and so on. And the people who will help you at the right time, in the right moment. I've seen this happen so often. It works. But if you really want somebody who can help you in a certain way, put out that thought and the right person will be there. <clears throat> You'll find it. The magnetism is your willpower sending energy, which creates, a, like a, an electric current, creates a magnetic field. So this thought, sent with energy, with willpower, creates a, a magnetic field around it, and that will attract to you whatever circumstance or people you want. That sounds as though it could be dangerous. It can be dangerous. You unless have, it's God-centered. You should have the right thoughts and the right expectations and want the right people. But people... I lived for a year in Charleston, South Carolina. It was a small city then, only 70,000 people. It's much bigger now. But uh, I was a writer. I wanted to study playwriting, and so I wanted to... Um, meet many kinds of people. And I was amazed to see how people would be attracted to their own level of society within days of coming to the town. Mm -hmm. So that people who were of a particular level immediately they found themselves surrounded by those people. Mm -hmm. And It sounds like that law operates a little bit automatically. It operates automatically. But it's possible to do it more consciously? or Yes. You can do it much more forcefully if you do it consciously. Hmm. Can inspiration be drawn by willpower? Inspiration can be drawn by willpower. I found in writing a song, for example, that I don't stop and think, well, I want the note to go up or the melody line to go up or down. I just say, well, I want a song that says this, 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 and this. Give me a melody. And I put my mind very strongly at the point between the eyebrows Instantly, the melody is there. And uh, I know when I first started writing songs, I did it as a means of sharing philosophy, ways of heart living, walk like a man, and so on. And uh, one day I got tired of writing the lyrics because it takes long to write good lyrics with rhymes and everything, where the melody came very quickly. So I thought, well, let me just go to somebody whose lyrics I like that are not especially meaningful, but I felt like kicking up my heels, you might say. <laughs> so I turned to Shakespeare's lyrics, and in three days I wrote 18 lyrics, 18 melodies. Mm -hmm. 
And they're very nice too. Who is Sylvia? What is she? That all our swains commend her. Holy, fair, and wise is she. The heaven such grace did lend her that she might admire it be, that she might admire it be. It's a nice melody, but I didn't have to work for it. It just was given to me. Swami, that sounds devotional the way you sing it. It's very sweet. Mm. Is it a humorous moment in the play? I don't remember. No, it's, it's, a, it's a beautiful song. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Beautiful. Wow. So you've developed that ability to draw inspiration at will. Yes. Uh, I don't know that I developed it. I don't know what to say. Yes, I suppose the answer is just yes. <laughs> <laughs> I wrote Yogananda's autobiography, I mean biography, and it's, it's a book of 300 and something pages. I wrote it in three weeks. And it just, I didn't have to think. When I, I wrote a script for his life just the other day, I didn't have to think what was going to happen or what, how should I get out of this predicament or whatever. I just, when I got there, the answer was there. And so I found that, yes, I, I've worked at meditation for many years, and I guess that's what helped me. But it flows. The more in tune you are with God and with superconsciousness, the more everything works. I read a book of uh, stories of great composers, and yes. Handel's Messiah seems to have come in a similar way yes. in a very short time. Yes. When you I wrote, in fact, when I wrote my oratorio, I wrote, um, I think it was 23 melodies in one day. And it, it too is beautiful. I'm not going to compare it, but it's beautiful. When you receive an inspiration, does it come fully formed or do you have to sort of tease it out over time? Sometimes I have to tease it. Often it comes as fully formed. Hmm. But the implementation of it is can be longer because sometimes these things have to be sort of translated into terms people can understand. Well, you know, I've had many years of practice, mm -hmm. and so I think it comes pretty easily that way too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But uh, well, for example, there's a song that I wrote many years ago. Hello there, brother Bluebell, play me a tune today. The breezes on the meadow have made you look so gay. The meadow larks are singing, the joy is in the air. Come set your bells a ringing, this, uh, this, what is your gladness to spare? Hello there, sister Dewdrop, Ling linger a little while. Your colors in the sunlight would make a monarch smile. What need have I for treasures, diamonds or gold? The sweetest of all treasures are here to behold. And I, that was, I, there's one more stanza, I'm not going to sing it. But just the other day, I realized I've always worried about that word sweetest. Hmm. Is, you know, treasures aren't sweet. But I couldn't think of another word that fitted. Mm -hmm. And suddenly it came to me, the fairest. So the fairest of all treasures. Oh. And uh, that's 50 years after I wrote that song. Amazing, amazing. Always the editor. Yeah. <laughs> well, Swamiji, for people just starting out and trying to develop this magnetism in themselves, it seems that being God-centered is yes, the first thing. Yes, and another thing that's very helpful is this energization to become aware of your body as energy, to become aware that everything that you do, you exercise energy. When you do the energization exercise, you learn that it's energy that you, that you, for example, even in cooking, if you eat food that has been cooked with love, it's always better. If it's been cooked with anger, it's not as good. And if, if you go to a restaurant, you'll find that the consciousness of the chefs, if there's a low consciousness, you feel it may taste good, but it doesn't feel good. Mm -hmm. 
This is why mother's cooking is considered the best, because the mother loves her children, her family, and so she cooks for them with love. So anything that you do, try to become aware of the energy that you're putting into it and realize that ultimately it's the energy that will determine whether it's a good thing or not. When the energy is right, everything is right. Swamiji, would it be helpful if you want to uh, develop a quality or a skill, if you mix with people who already have that This skill? is a very important thing. If you want to be an artist, mix with artists. Mix with good artists, don't mix with failure artists. <laughs> Their magnetism, well, you will gradually pick up that magnetism. If you want to be a businessman, then mix with businessmen, mix with six people who are successful in their field, and their magnetism will, will come to you. It's another thing, too, that when you shake hands with people, the upper part of the body and the lower part of the body form two horseshoe magnets. And uh, don't shake hands with people who are not good, you'll feel it. Yeah. But if, if you mix, if you shake hands with people whose magnetism you're trying to attract, it will help you. You will, you will become stronger. I know after church on Sundays, Yogananda asked me to stand outside and shake hands with everybody. I said, sir, please don't ask me to do this again. I feel drained. He said, that's because you're thinking of yourself. Think of God and uh, you won't feel it. So I thought of God and then I found that even though the people drew from me, I was always replenished. In fact, I felt better afterwards. So magnetism is a very real part of our reality. And uh, when we do it, use it consciously and do our work consciously, meet people with, with feeling the ch exchange of magnetism. Don't look into the eyes of sensual people or angry people or people whose consciousness is gross. Try to avoid their contact as much as possible. Mix with saints, this is why they say satsanga is so important. Mixing with spiritual people helps one to become more spiritual. And this finally is what happens when you meet your guru. It says in the Bible, as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God. So in receiving that quality of the guru without ego, his attunement with God, that is an attunement which you also absorb into yourself.